Your Childhood, it strikes me, would be a hit documentary on Netflix and people would not believe it. If they had filmed it, Your Childhood, I don't think people would believe how difficult it was. And I don't think you fully acknowledge that. Sometimes when I, I talk don't. to you about Somebody Your Somebody said recently you've experienced as much sadness as any or hardship as anyone i know and i was like i don't think i because you no, just genuine i was thinking about it recently because i watched the uh, the beginning of that uh it was like a cult documentary mm -hmm. and i went oh neil was had a worse childhood than that so talk us through the it gives the beats for anyone that hasn't seen it the beats of your childhood childhood father was a violent alcoholic um he would drink that's already a movie yeah, uh, this, this boy's this, life. This boy's life. Yes, yeah. that's kind of the main thing. Like my father was violent, and at that point, you're all you don't know where the violence is coming from, why, how often, and it creates kind of well. A there's state a whole thing in psychotherapy about where you were born. Like I'm, I'm a middle kid, so my uh, mother had all the anxiety around the first kid, and then the second kid, she was able to be more relaxed, and you feel that you're you're more relaxed as the yeah. second kid, right? Um, you were born where in the sequence? Tenth. Yeah, they don't have a theory on that. Because there's not enough of them. There's no theory. Yeah. There's no yes. book about, well, if you're the 10th kid, you'll be Neil Brennan. My mother was That's in, it. My mother was in labor for 45 minutes. For 45 minutes. Uh -huh. I mean, literally walked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was. She looked over and I was walking next to her. Yeah. Is, 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 with an umbilical cord. So no love from your father. Dad, none. Admitted, self-admitted, I did not love you. And on his deathbed. Which part of the deathbed took me, left, uh, wrote me out of his will. Wrote, yeah, disinherited. Yeah. And uh, consciously, mm -hmm. hadn't lost his mind, consciously mm -hmm. disinherited mm -hmm. and told you that he didn't love yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty heartbreaking to be your friend sometimes <laughs> because you, you have, I can feel, my, I'm like tearing up. It's, it's awful. It's just awful. And then, I look at your relationship with your mother and the I'm privy to a lot of the list of rules, which you you sort of name check in yeah, blogs. Yeah, I name a few of them. Bunch of TV rules, like a lot of laundry rules, a lot of sandwich rules. You guys probably all had sandwich rules, right? <laughs> I'm so obsessed by that. You had a list of rules that were put up by your mother that are, again, heartbreak upon heartbreak, like the food, the laundry, th the rules. The lack of warmth. No, warmth she was weirdly that. warm, in a, in her own way. And in her defense, she did stuff that was like incredibly thoughtful. Like every night, she would warm the plates up for dinner. Right. She made dinner, warm the plates up. We all have warm. It's like a nice, thoughtful thing to do. For instance, I and I, I'm more. I just spent some time <laughs> with my mom. Just there's a straw there. Oh, I can I can almost reach the the warm place. I mean, no love in your childhood in any in any way that anyone else would understand. No, no, no warm, real empathy. Yeah, but a warm plate. So that's something. Eh? If you're thinking about having kids, not as tough as you thought. Warmer plate that'll do. I mean, it really feels like that's. I could say the same about yours, buddy. For real. Uh, yeah, but uh, let's. Uh, well, well, no, I get it. But I'm just saying, like, that's why I don't have a ton of. You've got no self pity, which is remarkable and also a giant amount of self-pity like there i spent a lot of time feeling sorry for myself in my life and then at a certain point i had a story in blocks that you told me to cut and i didn't for a while and then i did when i taped it because i was like i don't i can't keep harping on this um it was a story about shitting my pants like either disobeying my father or shitting my pants and I chose to, you guessed it, shit my pants. The self-pity pool in my, in my spirit kind of went, I just stopped two, three years ago. I think we talked about this because JK Rowling had a great line on it, which is it's tough love at its toughest, where you go, we have to have a statute of limitations on childhood grievances. I don't know what age it is because it's definitely not 18. If someone comes to you at 18 and yep. says, I had that childhood, you go, Oh man, you okay? You need a hug. You okay? If someone comes to you at twenty-five and says, "I had a really tough childhood," but you can't be meeting St. Peter at the gates, going, "My dad." Did was, you see? Yeah, my dad was a dick. Yeah, yeah. but you had forty years. You come on. You, you, yeah, you have to get. That's past about that at some the calculation stage. for me. Is at around late forties. I was like, I guess not. I, I got to just stop doing this because I don't. A lot of that before that was a lot of anger at my yeah. dad and my mom and I like I was happy to talk about it. in fact three mics was written as a 
the dad part was written for revenge. And at a certain point, I was like, Don't, can I give him, I don't want to just go slag him on stage. So I made it more, I put, I put some empathy in it of like, what did yeah. I owe him and what was his life like? Yes. I mean, his life was, I mean, he grew up in the depression. Who, who even knows? But I think you want to correct that as a parent. I would agree. Yeah. I mean, you're, I, you're, what's your line in blocks? Both my parents were born during the Great Depression, and they were nice enough to bring it with them. <laughs> uh, that was the Derek Delgadio line, the director. Yeah. And uh, Again, great your line. obsession with fairness. It's a line in your special. It's a great line. You give the credit to the guy that gave you the line. It's like- Re the, Do you remember what every... I used to do for a living? Yeah. But it's, <laughs> but it's, it's interesting, that thing of like, your the 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 grievances which is your first big block um holding i mean i thought the next special if you just did you could call it grudge match and it's just all of the things where it's the other great line in blocks where you go i gotta be the only person who was ever asked the question you would you rather be right or would you rather be happy and i was like oh <laughs> and knowing you i go well that's bullshit you'd rather be right <laughs> I mean, like the idea, like you're bullshitting the audience by, oh, it was a tough decision for me. I bet that would have gotten the same amount of laughs. Yeah. You'd rather be right or you'd rather be happy. Right. Uh, right. Let's move, yeah, that would have gotten right. Let's move on. <laughs> hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.